Everybody wants to be happy. We know that. Everybody wants to be with people, generally speaking. It's kind of a human need. So you're saying we should team up? To be with other people will bring you happiness. Let's talk about it. So let's get right to it. Friends. Right to it. Mates. No. Buddies. Holding off. Pals. Teams. Cohorts. Associates. Uh, oh, I see what you're getting at. Peers. Here. What do you got? Oh, well. Well, yeah. I guess lovers can be friends. Yeah. Contrary to popular uh, song lyrics. Yeah. Um, so we're talking about being happy. How to be happy. How can one be happy? How can I be happier? Tell me how to be happy. This one might seem like it comes with strings attached, like uh, it might not be for everyone, even though it is for everyone. Oh, yeah. But it might be difficult for everyone, so we understand absolutely that this can be a challenge, but you've got to have friends. Hey, hey, hey. hey. And I don't hey, know the hey. rest of the song, hey. but... I don't either, but... You've got to have friends, Yeah. right? Your friends are your... Uh, friends. Your backup. They're your... Yeah. They're your... They're, they're your, the shoulder you lean on. They're yeah. the ear that listens to you even if they don't want to they're the what are they they're the enamel of your teeth correct the mucus in your nose they're the hairs of your nostrils yes. they're really they, that's what gives you life we're here uh, you know not coincidentally um in uh, at a football stadium mm -hmm. here on the bleachers on the bleachers where people tend to gather and congregate friends groups gather here they cheer together but most importantly they cheer others on <laughs> like, like turned into a, a preacher from <laughs> it's just one of those things that needed to be said yeah. but you know there's teams that work together that practice that rehearse and plan I'm just coming up with all these lists yeah. <laughs> and and some I, I don't know some people that I've met they're not all about working in teams just put me in my silo tell me what to do I'll get it done and for some, that works. And for some projects, that works. And some goals, obviously, that's going to work. But I'm telling you, when you uh, solicit the help of a mentor or a coach or someone that's already done what you're trying to do, man, it, it increases things two, threefold. So Jeff and I have been uh, keynote speakers and uh, corporate trainers in the field of leadership management, organizational development, and the like. For many years, we, we come in, we talk to people about how to get the most performance and the best performance out of their employees and their direct reports. And one of the things that we uh, find is a challenge, as a challenge, is a challenge that a lot of our clients ask us about is, is how can we have stronger teams? Because the team concept is just so critical. Good friends of ours have written books on teams. We know all kinds of uh, book writing gurus who make that their specialty, you know, how to be a stronger and better team. And you see the effect of amazing leaders, like in the sports field, you get a guy like Joe Madden, who came to the Chicago Cubs. He already was considered an amazing mind, but he was also playful and fun, led by example, lightened things up. And it created a bond between those players, you know, where they were literally having, you know, hugs and thank you circles before each batting practice. Mm -hmm. And the ultimate result? You know? Victoire, I'll say, after 100 plus years of you know being shut out and not winning, or even, I don't even know if they were in a World Series. I think they, well, were they ever in any World I, Series yeah. during their curse? I, I'm not, I'm, one thing I can say is this, when Joe Torre got the job to manage the Yankees. Oh, well, you'd moved right um, off my Cubs. You know, he. Bless your heart. He's such a Yankees <laughs> freak. He had never <laughs> won a World Series as a player. He, he'd, uh, you know, been a really good player, you know, and done well as a player. But he was the only, of all the coaches, you know, he gets, he gets Don Zimmer. He gets these other guys on his team that had been to and had, in some cases, won World Series. So sometimes I think there's this misconception that in order to have a really great leader, they have had to have incredible success and victories and, and, and have achieved the pinnacle of everything that I want. And that's not always the case. What are you saying? I'm saying that uh, it's not always the case. <laughs> that in order to get a great leader, you have to be a great team already? Is that what you're well, saying? Well, yeah. I mean, sometimes I think these leaders, you know, we got to make sure that we have the best of the best and thinking that someone like Michael Jordan well, or someone like... Well, let's take like an example right here. We just finished up in the last couple of months the NBA Finals. Yeah. And you have a guy like LeBron James who is arguably the best player on the planet uh, and possibly the GOAT, right, the greatest of all mm -hmm. time. And there are people who will argue all day that it's Michael Jordan, but 
and he was amazing, no question about it, and he has the rings to support it, but, but so does LeBron, and LeBron really is just the evolution of a Michael Jordan. He's bigger, he's stronger, he's faster, he's a better passer, he might not be as great of a defender, there's a lot of there, and leadership, all of those things, but the Cavaliers got blown out, once again, swept yeah. by the Golden State Warriors, who have overall a better team. Even though LeBron James was the captain and the undisputed leader and practically the imaginary coach of the, of the Cavaliers, it's just not enough. Yeah. You know, there are teams out there that are the, the, the combined, what's, what's the term? The collective strength of the individual parts is stronger than the whole of the individual gamete. Rem removed once and, and <laughs> carry the one. The sum of the parts is stronger than the, the yeah. sum of the, the... sum of the parts are greater than the whole. The sum of the whole are greater than the... Part well, you of the know, sum is greater is than, than eating whole wheat bread. Exactly. Like That's that. all we're trying to say. But the fact is, is that if you've got friends, um, someone to lean on, someone to talk to, someone to spend time with, someone who will listen when you have complaints and only listen and not necessarily give advice unless it's solicited. These are the people that matter most. Now, where do you find those friends? Hmm. That's the question. Many people find them in their families. Because sometimes if you look inward, you'll realize that the people you've been around the most of better part of your life, siblings, even as grown siblings, you might have had your differences as children, but usually you grow out of that as adults. Hopefully. And you can lean on them, hopefully, yeah. yeah. If not, I've found that a lot of my best friends are ones that I've had since those younger days anyway. There's something about youth and all of the experiences that you have when you're young that I think binds people together and keeps them closer longer over the years. Even if you move away and you're on the other side of the planet and you haven't seen them in 50 years, they're still your best friends, mm -hmm. you know, and there are still people you can call on uh, in case you need a friend like that. Call on me if you... No, that's the wrong song. Lean on me. Lean on me. Call, call me as Blondie. There we are. Lean on me as Carl Withers. Or... Carl Weathers from, like, the first the Rocky, Rocky movie? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know he was a singer. It's Carl something. Yeah. All right, all right. So, so to wrap up, just quickly, uh, top... Top couple of uh, teams, top oh, teams of people or friends that have been impressive to you. To, okay, so number three. I'll start number three. Uh, Stephen Ambrose wrote a book called Band of Brothers, and Ooh. HBO made a movie about yeah. the Band of Brothers. You talk about a team. Yeah. Watch that movie or read the book or do both because man, those hearts were knit together. Yeah, yeah. When they're forged in the fire of of combat. And, and all of the trauma that comes with uh, military action, that's, you're right, that's got to be. Uh, related to that, I had, as number three, the, the cast of characters and possibly the real people of M.A.S.H. Hmm. And I had that as a toss-up between the cast of Seinfeld and the cast of M.A.S.H., only because they, in both on screen and off, there seemed to be a genuine respect, love, admiration, and friendship for these people. Now, again, they're working together for 10 years or more straight, shooting television series and there you, you spend a lot of time together but mm -hmm. the characters as well seemed to coalesce yeah. really yeah. nicely i like those examples all right number two for you uh i gotta say thomas edison and his team in order to come wow. around and get everything together to invent the light bulb now of course thomas edison gets all the credit but what most people don't know is that he had assembled a team of four or five individuals who were expert in one was the filament guy, the other one was the vacuum guy, the other one was the outer material guy, and he put that team together and came up with one put of the greatest Put that team together. Yeah, that's, right. that's right. That's where I thought you were. You kind of got that accent going. See, dunk, he dunk, put dunk. that team together. Yeah. <laughs> Out Edison. there in Menlo Park, New Jersey. Yep. Yeah. Great one. I, I love Thomas Edison as well. I talk about him a lot. Jeff and I, as mentioned, we, we do some public speaking, and he, Thomas Edison seems to make it yeah. into our, our stories a lot. I'm going to go ahead and just stay local here because we're in Salt Lake. The current edition of the Utah Jazz is, uh, seems to coalesce well. They're not champions of the world, but they are, you know, they're, they're monster killers. I mean, they, they are a mostly just a ragtag group of pretty good guys. Donovan Mitchell has become a real all-star but they, they just have coalesced. They care more about the team. It's more about, I don't care who, who scores when, we just want to win this game. And I think that's also part of how the Warriors have done so yeah. well. They do have bona fide all-stars, no question about it. But the mentality is, take me out, put me in, do what you got to do as long as we win this game. Number one yeah. for you. So growing up in the 80s, 
Pat Riley and the Lakers. Oh boy. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean that team. Showtime. Uh, yeah, it, it was just an, every time they walked on on the field, it was it was just what are they going to do? You know, I mean, you, you had you had Kareem in the middle, you had Magic, and then you had James Worthy. Worthy. That was the front line. Right? Yeah. And then you had Norm Nixon. Yeah. And probably it was um, Byron Scott. Byron Scott was probably the other was one. In there. And then you had guys coming in. You know, you had Jamal Wilkes, and you had uh, Michael Cooper. It was just so deep, and their team, because I mean, obviously Magic was the star, and so was Kareem, but they got. There was no ego, not like the Shaq and Kobe thing yeah. a few years later, right? now, it was more Let's about just win. the team. Let's get some team rings here. If we win, we all win. Whether you're playing yeah. three minutes a game or 43 minutes a game, we all get the rings, yeah. we all get the bonuses, we all get the parade. Yeah. Let's all retire as winners and, and, and kill the ego. Uh, you're right, I agree. And I thought Magic Johnson was a great example of that. I, I just thought he was the happiest, nicest, and, and to be the king of assists until John Stockton came along. Here he is, a six foot eight, six foot nine center guard forward, can play any position and can score if he wants to at will, but he's willing to find the open man. Similar to yeah. LeBron James, who is an, yeah. probably the best passer in the NBA today, if not of all time as well. Just yeah. has amazing vision. Number one for me, uh, we talked about this in a movie in another episode, but is the 1980 men's U.S. hockey, hockey team. Uh, at Lake Placid, beating the Russians in the semifinal game, and then uh, Holland or Norway or whoever w happened to be the patsy yeah. in the gold medal game. But uh, a bunch of college, you know, scrappers, none of them professional hockey players, uh, coming together. Some of them from rival schools had to get past their animosity towards each other. Went through the furnace of hell with uh, the coach there. What's his bucket? Played by uh, yeah, Herbie, Herbie Brooks. Her, Her Brooks. Yeah. Oh gosh. And, uh, and to come out the fittest, fastest, best team in the world yeah. uh, was absolute underdog story yeah. and just an amazing... Watch that movie if you haven't seen it. It's incredible. So you want to be happy, find some friends, gather them around you, stay loyal, be true, listen a lot. Uh, it'll make them happy. It'll make you happy. It's happiness all around. And you'll be teaming with happiness. <laughs> <laughs> I get it because it's teams. Yeah. Well, favorite if you, teams. If you weren't a, a believer in teams before, you, you probably be still aren't. Uh, what are your favorite teams? Yeah. <laughs> you can I see how know. well we team yeah, up. Yeah, exactly. Right. We talk over each other no, sorry, at no, every time that we say, no, 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 no. there's absolutely no, no chemistry. We're a good team. Tell us who your favorite teams are. Like us, subscribe, do all of the stuff. See you next time.